Operation Transit has restarted. Yay! First job. Empty it out. Got to empty it. We've got to take basically Everton out of the transit. It's a bit busy. <coughs> um, we'll take you around the back and we'll just you'll see how busy the transit is. Because we need to get Everton out and then we need to make a plan of attack. We've got a plan it. of attack. Have we? Yeah! Well, we just attack it. Yeah! Sounds good. There's a fair bit of stuff in here. Uh, Whose idea was this? Technically, that might have been mine, um, but... Kept it out of the house. Won't take us long. Five minutes? No. <laughs> Fifteen hours later, we've managed to clear the van out. Right? So, what we've been doing, cleared it all out. Neil's put a trim on to make the edge nice and neat. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going over any rough edges where we put wood filler on from when we put the ceiling in. And then we're gonna go over, well, I'm gonna go over because I am the painting department. I'm gonna go over and just put another little coat of my paint onto the ceiling so it looks beautiful. While Emma's doing her rubbing down stuff and making loads of noise and dust and stuff like that, I'm gonna get in the battery and basically make up the cables for the DC to DC charger and we are going to be fitting lithium into this van now I'll lithium? show you mm. right so inside this van we're going to be fitting an SOK lithium iron phosphate battery which is 206 amp hours which is going to give whoever gets this van enough power to you know do what they want to because they want to have a DC to DC split charge relay on it as well so it's going to keep that nice and topped up we're not fitting solar to it we're going to leave that to whoever buys the van and you know it goes on to its next home but yeah this big boy's going in there we have cleared the van out i know there's more stuff back in here but we've had to put some stuff back in just to keep it out of the way we have managed well neil has put some trim along the bottom of the van and along the back of the van just to make sure that the floor stays in and then we have also managed to get the curtains in which just gives you a nice little bit of privacy. There we go. Gone cold now. Freezing. Mm. But productive. Yes, not the weather for building units, by the way. <laughs> Hence why I think we should buy them. What do you think? I can't be bothered making units. <laughs> um, to be fair, we want it to look Professional. like a proper job, not like a pair of monkeys have done it. Hey! What's Ubi do? You're more like blue. Well, uh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, more. And then we go online, have a look for units, have a look for companies, see what's out there. Let's go get looking then. Into webs. Google is strong. Let's go. <laughs> so we went onto the Kitline website and we had a look through all the different sections of the website. It was really easy to navigate. Uh, and then we found the section where you bought and basically designed your own units for the Ford Transit long wheelbase. They do do a short wheelbase as well and they do all sorts of other vans on there as well but for us it was basically just a case of looking for the van we wanted the units for and then leaving it to Emma to go through the colours. Obviously Neil's not allowed to choose things like that, that's all down to me. We decided to go for the beach look and then we decided to go with a black worktop so it was the easy process of just going through the whole lot choosing which colours we wanted, going to the checkout, and then four weeks later, the whole kit arrived. In these boxes, guys, you've got absolutely everything you're gonna need to actually build the units yourself. Got stuff like the knock-on edging trim, got table legs, hinges, connect connectors, tamber door corners, your tamber doors, all of the things that will save you time going and individually buying them online oh, yourself. Yeah. They're all here ready done for you in this kit. Another great bonus of this kit is that the instructions that come with it, they come online. So when you're an Emma and you've got a Neil, you don't have to worry about losing them or getting them ripped up. You can just go online and up the pop. Another massive bonus is as well with these kits, like some of the ones you've seen on eBay and things like that, they're made out of MDF. These are proper furniture boards. They're made out of proper furniture boards. 
you find with the MDF ones and the cheaper ones, it's kind of all, all one, one shape unit. and it's all one unit. And once you get them all built together, and we know from the T4, they are massively heavy. These things, they're not as heavy because it's made from proper 15 mil light wood ply. Yeah, and it's furniture board as well. So it's hard wearing. We love this color. This is a color we run with because of the ceiling. All you gotta do is build it and then put it in the van. Easy. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the website, download the instructions, put the instructions on the table, and then um, figure out what we've gotta do. And like Emma says as well, all the parts are sent with the kit. We all know now that things have gone through the roof. The prices of build stuff, if you are building units, even down to hinges and you know, edge and trim, ever found an edge and trim company the other day selling, how much was it? It was four pounds a meter. The only other one that was selling the same edge and trim um, was another company for one pound nine a meter, but they were out of stock. Yeah. And the only one that I could find that was in stock, four pounds a meter. So Just ridiculous. For 50 meters, basically 200 pounds. Yeah. Plus what? as well, hinges and, you know, you've got to get, you know, things cut to the right shape this is all done for you it's literally all done for you it's like you go online you pick your units what color you want and then you build it there's no messing about this i actually sat down one night and costed it all and i literally sat there tried to find every single find every single item and it actually worked out one to two hundred pound cheaper to buy a kit than buy everything yourself. But then on top of that, like Neil says, you've got the added time yeah. of actually. You've got to measure everything perfect. You've got to make sure all, go, you know, the people just haven't got the time to do that. Or the skill, a lot of people haven't got the skill to, you know, to work everything out. These kits, once they're made, look absolutely grade A professional. They're just brilliant. So let's get building and see how we get on. Right, well, there's all the instructions. So. They're all online to tell you what the kit is. We are building that section there, which is the front piece of the actual units. And then as you can see, it goes through everything. The first thing you do is to add the edge and trim onto all the pieces. There, that's the first thing you've got to do. Right, let's get T trim. There we go. There's one piece edge and trimmed. Flush on the inside and then the little lip comes over the outside, just like you can see there. That's one done few more to go over this side we've got the actual wardrobe bit of the units so that's those bits there and then if we come over this side we've got the kitchen area of the units right that's the first job done all the edge and trim is all on all complete all looks lovely don't forget when you are going around these corners as well Cut a little knot, little nip out on the back of the edge and trim where it goes in, so it folds over nice. But yeah, that's all the edge and trim done on the the base section of the actual units. And now what we're doing is we're moving on to step number one. Well, number two, but we're kind of cheating a little bit. We'll show you. So we have a bag of these little things. They're called one. What are they called? One fix connectors. They're called one fix connectors. And they all go in these holes. So we're basically just pushing them all in first because they've got to go in there anyway. Um, as you can see, Emma's got one there. Here's one I made earlier. And it's dead simple. You just take them, put them in the hole like that, and then just give them a push and a bit of a squeeze and they go in, Yay. just like that. So we've got all the units to do all the way around. Get all the one fix connectors in, and then we can start looking at assembling. Assembling? <laughs> assembling. <laughs> assemble. England isn't too good. Well, my England is broken. Um, then we can start looking at assembling the first section of the first unit. It's a long process. Just take your time. The edge and trim takes a while. You may lose your rag a little bit. Have a cup of tea, calm down, 
cup of tea and a biscuit. Hmm, that's um, not a process you want to rush because, you know, good quality. That's. Time to Let's get all these little guys in and fix properly. Right, we've got um, a helper, haven't you? Yes. You helping, doll? Always help, don't you? So they just push in there. Done all them. Right, so we've started putting the cupboards together and to be completely and utterly honest, with the instructions that the company have given us, it is so, so easy to put these units together. You literally just need a screwdriver, pop them together, and then you're done. It is so easy. So all, all the units, obviously, they're the, the, the quick fixings, little holes in the side, and then it just slots in really easy to every single one on the back screwdriver give it a turn don't go mad with it nice and tight but not over tight progress has been made now can i have cake now the main bit put together a um, few more bits to go on gonna put the work top on uh, but it's easy isn't it yeah it looks so good yeah, I mean, the ply that we originally bought, we wouldn't have been able to do. No, we, we couldn't have built anything near this good. No. And we've saved money. Yes. Massive, massive yes. saving. On, oh, you count everything up, you're saving money and you're getting a much better product. Right, let's crack on. Yay! Something we've never seen before is the holes that are in the actual units. They do have these little grey grommeting or I don't know what you call them but they're, they're like plugs that go in walls and they literally just go in there like that just like so we have been giving them a little tap with the, the hammer to get them in nice and flush so they're just like that and then all the screws just screw into them and then obviously it opens up inside inside where all your hinges go you'll just see inside there that the actual trim just sticks inside it a little bit I would take a knife and literally just cut off that piece of the plastic that goes in there Dolly's come to hell. You alright Doll? You okay? So yeah, I've cut that little piece of plastic and it just means that the actual unit is nice and round. You'll see that one there, it's just sticking over inside but after you've cut it off, it does go like that so it's nice. <laughs> when you're trying to record but your little helper is... You okay there? She's not helping at all. So the idea of the grommets are when you are fixing things like say your your locks, they will go over and then you literally just screw into the grommet, holding it into the wood, rather than just screwing it into the wood. Much better idea. We are 90% there on these bottom small units. We've got the doors in, we've got a drawer in. We're just about to fit the timbre doors. So I'm thinking I'm gonna hand you over to me. The kit comes with two timbre doors. Now, you will be, you'll think, put this one on first and then put your timbre doors on. They do come with rails, but where your timbre doors go is the inside of the units and we'll show you in a minute. Make sure when you're fitting them, that you put these pieces on first to the floor. So these pieces basically, as it's standing, go to the floor on the side and they go in first. Then you add these pieces on the top. Also, they do come with these two pieces, are the corner pieces where the actual timbre door will go in and roll round. Now, I do recommend um, that you just put a couple of screw holes in each of the three corners pre-drill them first before you drill them to the units 
just makes life a little bit easier when you're fixing these in then you've got a pre-drilled hole that can go straight through to the bores then we'll go inside and i'll show you exactly how you mount your timbre doors because a lot of people get these wrong and when they're wrong they just they don't work properly so let's get them in properly because it's worth doing properly that was a lot of properties and you said mount <laughs> This lip will meet up to this channel here, so it's gonna be just like that. So the timbre door rolls up and goes into the actual house. We're gonna get these mounted first. So we put these in right to the side and then drop it right down to the floor and then where it sits, that is where you're gonna screw it in. On these two pegs here, which isn't a problem, spaced off a little bit don't try and bend it in at all just let it sit there nicely and then get your screws in and once it's screwed in we'll come back and put the top piece on then you can put the top piece on and it literally you'll just line the channel up which is there with the channel in here don't make the mistake of pushing this right to the edge otherwise the channel's going to be off there so just make sure it comes out just a little bit if you want you can just put a little bit of car behind there just to keep it in place but that will sit just there like that right we fitted the runners inside the actual unit now all we got to do is fit this in and feed it in just as a little side note as you can see on the bottom of your door there there's a bigger gap that is so you can get your little fingers in and lift it up and down so make sure that your big gap goes to the bottom feed the, the, the bit with no gap feed that in first because you need to put your hands in this to lift it up and down i'm going to tilt it emma's going to feed it because she's a feeder true story so once you get it in just feed it up nice and steady make sure you pull from the middle because you don't want to pull one side up and the other one not come up because it won't track And then once your timbre door's in, it should work perfectly. There's got to be a bit of stiffness on it at first, but it will run smooth and you'll be able to get it up and down. In time, they do bed in because it's all brand new plastic, so you know it's got a you've got to give it time to wear in a little bit. Right now we've got the main carcass all together. We get to put the lid on. We haven't got the cooker yet because we've had a few issues with that. <laughs> they sent the wrong one twice. <laughs> we thought we had the right one, but yeah, no, we opened it last night. Wrong one. But it's all in hand. Emma's dealt with it. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so we, we did tell the company that due to the problems we've had with cooktops, just leave the cutouts, but um, Kitline will cut out for whatever sink hob unit you have. So just keep that in mind when you're buying it online, it does say what type of sink you've got in. You can ring them up, they are, you speak to Kath on the phone. She is lovely, she will answer any of your questions. And basically, you can have it designed how you want, what type of sink you want. And if you want it left, perfect. So let's get the roof on. So we're gonna line the roof, the roof. Gonna line the work top with all these knobs and then basically get in and fasten them all from the inside no problem whatsoever. That was easy enough, honey. Yes. Good quality as well. Right, the next thing to do with these is to get this portion of the units into the van. Um, that will then give us enough space to build the wardrobe system that goes to the back. 
But if you want to see more of it, come on. Subscribe.